Hey everybody, and welcome back to another No Budget Puppet Review. The collection has expanded yet again, though for better or for worse remains to be seen. Today we'll be looking at, drumroll please, this Ceratosaurus puppet. Not sure about the brand, because it's in Chinese, but it looks like it might be New Canna. Same as a bunch of the others I've got. So, to give a bit of a preface, our pal the horned lizard here has actually long been my favorite dinosaur. Say what you want about Jurassic Fight Club, but that's the show that really made me love this guy. If you've seen the show, you might be surprised because the Ceratosaurus was pretty much just there to get clapped by the Allosaurus. But that's just it, it was an underdog, and that's who I always like to cheer for. Most of the time. With some small exceptions. But yeah, Ceratosaurus for me is just the right size of theropod dinosaur. Not too small, but also not, shall we say, tyrannically large. It was a mid-sized creature that was big enough and powerful enough to make it a feared predator in its ecosystem. Just not invincible. It gives a character. It's the same reason I like hyenas more than lions. Oh, and let's not forget, those horns look super dope too. It just looks cool, and that's a fact. So with that being said, I've been on the lookout for a decent Ceratosaurus puppet to feature in my films for a long, long time. Even some 13 years ago, back when I first discovered the Puppet Toys brand, my original intention was to get their Ceratosaurus, not the T-Rex. It's just that only the Rexes went on the market and nothing else did, so I guess that's pretty much why Dinosaur Attack started Tyrannosaurus instead of a Ceratosaurus. The more you know. And since then, unfortunately, I never really seemed to have any luck finding another of these things on the puppet market. I mean, sure, sometimes you'd get something like this, but I mean, come on, it has no neck. I can't work with this. So you can imagine how happy I was to one day stumble upon this puppet on AliExpress. It looked pretty good, a full neck was present, and it was cheap too. It was a no-brainer for me to order it, so I did. A few weeks later it arrived, and oh man, I was so excited, and... Oh no. Well, I guess this is useless to me now. I really wish the product listing would have at least mentioned something about an electronic component. Because having this big ugly box right here just ruins it for me. Say goodbye to all low angle shots now. May as well put up a giant billboard saying, this is a toy. And yeah, I, I get that we all know they're puppets anyway, but I at least want them to look somewhat good on camera. To offer like, some level of immersion. And now I can't. I've tried thinking of ways I could mod this to completely conceal the ugly electronic chin, but I just don't see a way of doing it securely enough to where I can withstand all the wear and tear my puppets go through, assuming I'd even have the skills to do it properly. The sound function isn't even that cool either. You flip the switch, trip the motion sensor, and out comes a string of three rather weak sounding roars. Not exactly movie quality. And this sensor really has a mind of its own. I feel like half the time anything sets it off and half the time it's blind. Oh, and why three roars every time? Each time I trigger it, I have to wait like forever for it to finish. Overall, in my humble opinion, this feature is pretty lame and unnecessary. Back in my day, we used this little thing called imagination. <laughs> Just let a puppet be a puppet. Not everything has to have some extra gimmick to make it cool. But moving on from the unfortunate electronics, the rest of the puppet is actually pretty alright. The level of detail on the sculpt is easily at or above many of the others in my collection. Every scale is individually molded, very impressive. The material itself is sturdy and won't bend in any way it's not supposed to, making its movements more realistic, like there's actually bones inside of it. This does make it slightly stiff, but not so much that you wouldn't be able to move it properly, so that's fine. Coming back to the sculpting a bit, just looking at the overall shape of this bad boy, I think for the most part it does deliver. From what I can tell, it's fairly accurate to the real thing. We got the three horns on the head, the scoots running down the spine, skull structure's looking okay. It's just that lower jaw though. The electronics kind of take up a lot of room in there, giving it this awkwardly big chin with almost like an underbite. I guess it could be worse, but that's just one more reason for me to dislike the electronic gimmick. Paint job's cool. I like how they shook things up by complementing the base color with dark stripes and a dash of blue here. Making the horns red was a neat choice since the real animal probably went around using these for display, so it makes sense you'd want them to look nice and flashy. The eye is a unique color as well, dark red with a gold iris. I would have gone for something lighter to stand out more from the surrounding dark scales, but this works well enough. 
In conclusion, this is actually a decent puppet that I would recommend to someone just looking for a fun toy or something. Because in all fairness, it's a well-made product that looks good and functions as a puppet should. And even if the sound gimmick is a little dumb, it's not hard to just keep it off if you don't care for it. For 10 bucks, this is a steal. However, for me specifically, as a guy who's looking for something to use as more of a film prop, the electronics in this thing just tragically hold it back. I really would have wanted to add Ceratosaurus to Dino Duels, but with the way this is, it's just so blatantly a toy that I can't bring myself to do it. This puppet came close for me, but I think my search for the perfect Ceratosaurus will have to continue. One day, Ceratosaurus, your day will come. Your day will come.